Okay. Today is the 26th of January. This is the DevSync. Hopefully this recording will work. Um, so let's uh, go through. We've got uh, two more days left in our sprint here. Uh, so let's pull up that board again and uh, just check in and see how we're doing. Um, I've got it up here on my screen. But uh, Chris, can you pull it up and share it? I think it tends to work a little better that way. All right, so. Go ahead and we can start with you, Chris. And uh, it's like you've got a lot of stuff in, well, a few things in progress. How's the uh, Travis migration going, aside from you being muted? Oops. Um, Travis migration is doing OK. Um, I found out today that the coverall stuff we use for code coverage is not supporting um, the output from PyTest in the GitHub Actions. So, um, I am looking into, and I wanted to bring this up and make sure this wasn't some any scope creep of any sort. Um, but what I was looking at was switching from coveralls to um, cov. I'm bring up the ticket. Okay, so I put these comments in. Um, CodeCov IO um, allows free usage for open source projects and does kind of the same thing where we. You post our um, our results, our code code results up there, and you can see you know the, the results. You can see differences between runs, and um, the other thing that the coveralls did that this all would also do is to keep that uh, our test testing percentage um, in our README file. Um, so um, I was going to go ahead with that unless. Um, Unless there's an objection, um, that's the only thing left to do, really. <laughs> it's the rest of it works. Um, well, so. I, I don't have any technical knowledge on, on which to make a decision, but um, <laughs> it seems like you've covered the bases. So, yeah, um, I, I didn't want to. So I I spent a lot of time on this on the code coverage stuff today. I researched, um, you know, different avenues. I researched why coveralls wasn't working. Um, so I, I thought I'd be able to move on to something else today, but I did not. So um, hopefully I can finish this this afternoon and and then move on to something else tomorrow. But that's kind of where sounds good to me. Um, and the other two we talked about yesterday are just um, so rebuild preloaded mimic two cache. I actually just pushed that. Nice. Um, so that is done and implement new pairing workflow. Um, I think that still is up to. Um, a discussion we had yesterday about how we want to include that in um, the Mark II image so that we can play with it without, because we're kind of waiting on uh, 2102 for it to really work. Um, so I've I've added that to the build process. It's just going to grab the latest version from that feature branch. So um, so that will be in the image. Whatever whatever the latest of that feature branch is will be in each image, um, and then. Once we hit 2102 and we can safely add that to the marketplace, then we can remove that special fix. Okay. And I will mark this as done as well because the PR is actually is approved. Um, it's just, and it works. It's just waiting for that. So, do you want, should it go to like Derek or something to, because that, that's kind of the last piece of the, you know, the new onboarding. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? Actually, I have a little bit of work left to do on this because we changed, Derek changed those uh, two screens with the URLs. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I do have to modify those QML files slightly. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it in progress for now. And I'll, that shouldn't take me very long to do. Cool. Okay. Great. Let's, uh, let's go on to whoever's next. Derek. I'm just going to go by faces here. Derek's face is, is the next face. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. So yeah, I still have quite a few things in, the, in progress, and I distracted myself today. Um, a lot of Mark II SJ240 stuff, as I've been trying to uh, make sure that those are going to be fine or work okay for the rollover. Josh is printing one as well. So it's been actually a lot of my time today, uh, kind of going over some of the issues I was getting nitpicky about, like the microphone alignment's not quite right. Um, the screws for the bottom speaker mounts are a little too short. They're not quite grabbing enough threads. And um, I was tweaking the microphone gasket itself, which kind of creates the, the airtight seal around the top of the plastic and the microphone. So I ended up spending the majority of my day with that kind of stuff. Um, soldered up a couple more speakers and whatnot to build some more prototypes. Uh, but then I did spend a little bit of my time on the um, the MK2-263 ticket, um, mostly around um, building some of the spec sheets that we didn't have before. We didn't really have one for the SJ230 itself. Josh provided some instructions on the threaded how the threaded inserts should be applied. So I was going to add that to the spec sheet. And um, you know the picture that I sent to Joe, I was going to add that in there so we know what all the sub assembly part numbers are. Um, yeah. And then I scheduled a couple of meetings tomorrow to hopefully cover all the rest of that stuff um, with uh, Johnny and um, Kevin. Uh, so hopefully we can still knock that out. Uh, there is like some work in progress stuff for the packaging um, in there. Uh, hopefully I can get back to that tomorrow too. Um, yeah, so I'll do what I can. I'll try and get get the rest of this done by tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. The uh, when you mean the packaging, do you mean like the insert? Oh yeah, the insert. Yeah. Right. Okay. The card. Um, and I, I started. I was going to say I started going over the um, the disclosure for the prototype. Um, thinking about that a little bit, I hadn't really thought about that yet. Yeah, I, the, I just found that uh, that dash two fourteen ticket uh, a little while ago. I moved it in, into the sprint. Um, so I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah, yeah, I did. And so I was yeah, I started a new document and started. Just like the last three minutes, I started right. uh, writing up a draft of of our version of that. Right. Cool. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Hopefully tomorrow will be more just on that stuff and um, less on the SJ two forty. All right. Josh. The second one's done. All the parts are are in movement. Uh, I'm not actually making a video. I made a instructable, but I'm I'm not done. It it needs to be published effectively. But all the crop images are cropped, and all the instructions are in there, and all the pictures are taken. I didn't even realize I had tickets. Uh, and then I uh, I really do need to figure out how to make Jira part of my workflow. Uh, I got the uh, uh, I got the first round of Mark II or Mark <coughs> or printer. Um, the PETG stuff strings a little bit, but all in all, it's pretty solid. And uh, 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 anyway, so I'll assemble that today. I have three SJ201s that are bound for our rollover. Um, so as soon as we have software to go with those or we have software that um is uh, that will update itself automatically if we can put those in the mail as soon as i assemble them uh, i will say the image that i'm using up in the kitchen right now did crash um uh, i don't know what caused it i honestly don't know what image i was using uh i'm using i i went back to gez's uh, uh 
I, I'm, I'm loading up the one that Gez made me yesterday. Um, anyway, I'll push that one in production here at the house and then give you guys feedback tomorrow. Hey, Josh, I just thought of something. Um, do you have any fans? Uh, I just realized that you might not have fans for these. Yeah, I bought some, uh, I bought some of these. Uh, NF A410 premium cooling fans. Uh, they're for Mo's printer, but uh, it's the right size for this, so it's fine. Um, we can just right connector. Yeah, it's got a connector on it. One is uh, the right four pin deal we've got. They've got a bunch of it. have got a bunch of adapters in here too, so. Uh, anyway, yeah, I can use these. If not, I can get them from Amazon for like, I think this was like 12 bucks. And it's really well viewed. They're like 15 dBA or something. They're very quiet. Cool. Just double check, make sure those will work with our board. Okay. I'll try not to, to burn it out. Our, our board's pushing 12 or 24, Michael. 12. Okay. Then it should work fine. Yeah, and if you connect it, uh, depending on how the connectors are oriented, um, the four pin connector should just work fine. Uh, but if it's got an adapter in there to make it a two pin connector, that'll force it to just be on always. So you can do it that way if you want to. Sure, I'll hook it up and get it going. And uh, Other than the stringing on the print, which is the material and the printer settings, not Derek's drawings, I think we're good. Um, but Derek and I do need to continue to go through and like he was talking about, like tweaking the last little things. Um, I guess finally, I don't know if I told you this, but I got to, I got in touch with Steve Michon at uh, Zero Tolerance. He has room for us. Um, they now have a molding shop up there in Detroit. Um, so he can do both, do all the molds and do all the injection molds for us and give us the plastics. So uh, as soon as we are ready to have that conversation, that is in the works. All right, that's great. Okay, who's next? Ken? Ken. So I'm still working on the uh, overflows, but I made some progress. I uh, was able to get rid of them at the lowest level where I wrote a cord audio driver, so that record no longer gets them. I found some obscure it was a fix that it said shouldn't have been needed for newer versions of the kernel, but I don't know what that means. Um, that seems to work. Problem is when I extend it up to Mycroft now, um, it's not working as expected. So that's where I'm at, but I do believe I've fixed the problem or at least got the proper patch in place for the low level also overrun issue. Mm, that's great. Yeah, that's really good. Cool. Well, I'll try. To, I'll try to figure out why it's still causing trouble up in uh, up in Mycroft. But right. yeah, inside of Mycroft, it seems to be working okay. Nice. Well, that's great progress. All right. Um, Gez. Um, I didn't have a, a huge day yesterday. Um, feeling pretty rubbish still, but uh. Partly, I think Linux can't hang over and I don't know. Uh, anyway, but um, virtual conferences are rough, aren't they? Yeah, I thought given I spend, I don't want to say how many hours a day in front of a computer that doing that for a conference would not be any different, but somehow it throws you. Um, anyway, but um, yeah, the pairing skills. Um, going to be loaded in the next nightly image. Um, I had a good meeting with, um, with Ricardo from Panacore to, to go through, you know, what the, the few last things that we need um, to, to get in this um, before the dev kit ship. Uh, and he's aiming to do that by the end of the week. Um, the, the buffer overrun stuff, I it sounds like this was accurate, but I've, I've said that that's 
not on them at the moment, which sounds sounds like is the right choice. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's only a couple of things like um, you know getting the right shell when you um, the right user when you when you um, SSH in and um, fixing the the reboot slash shutdown, um, adding the the boot screen stuff and uh, anyway, a couple of other things, just the tickets that are in GitLab. Um, what else? Um, tested the, got a new image out um, for Josh uh, and the, yeah, the, the Python package stuff still seems to be working for those new images. So hopefully it was just an old image that um, got slashed to that USB uh, that caused those things. Um, and I, you'll notice that I cleared out a few of those things that I mentioned yesterday that, that we're going to um, bump back a little bit. Um, so, yeah, looking pretty close to getting this all finished off by the end of the sprint with our one day remaining. Right. Okay, well, there's, there's two ones that are still marked as to do in your list. Um, and, you know, one of them is kind of a big one. Uh, well, to me anyway. Um, they both actually look fairly significant. The creating a process for rollover to develop their skill on the dev kit. Um, well, it could be sorry. a one-off. It doesn't have to be through the back end, right? Uh, but as long, you know, that's that's something that's going to hold up uh, sending us devices to rollover. In in my mind, that is an email. Like, okay. The, the, yeah. Um, All right. As long as know. it's doable that way, that's fine. But, um, and the other one is the the MSM unable to install system packages. Um, yeah. So um, this is one of three things. Uh, either it's uh, an issue in MSM, either or an issue in Paco, which is a little library that installs system packages across different package managers. Um, but Matthew Schofield wrote, uh, uh, or it's um, a user permissions issue. So Panico is also going to have a look at that. Okay. Which is good. <laughs> Got it. So They're also yeah. keen to tie this off. Right. Okay. So the, it's got their name in front of it. So I assume that means that they're taking point on it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it actually in Sorry. progress or is it still to do? Uh, it was to do as of 12 hours ago. Okay. Um, and I haven't seen anything to indicate otherwise yet. Got it. So, so that should be done by the end of the week. Does that so. mean we can't install uh, we can't install new skills on the system right now? You can't install certain skills. So um, Pandora, for example, anything that requires a a system package. Hmm. So Pandora, uh, there's not too many of them to be honest. The desktop control skill, which you wouldn't use on on a Mark II, uh, right. I have to go and look. Yeah. All right. So it's not critical right now. No, and it's it's definitely fixable. Like, it's it's one of three very clear problems. Right. Okay. Great. Uh, so last uh, person here is myself. Well, and Kevin, but uh, Kevin got stuck in a snowstorm, so he's actually not even back yet from his trip to the mountains. Um, so uh, as for me, I closed out a couple of things. Uh, the worksheet uh, system for tracking inventory that's done. Um, I need to talk to the uh, biz team about making sure that's fully populated properly. Um, but that's a separate issue. Um, I actually marked as won't do for the, the uh, ticket I made for myself about checking the clock stability, because I think that was a red herring. Um, and, uh, so in progress, I have my get organized, uh, 
one. Um, so I think we're actually doing most of this. <laughs> uh, but um, I've got a, uh, I do want to, um, I'm going to hit up a couple of you guys uh, over the next few days to uh, talk about some ideas about um, uh, how we're handling sprints and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, but otherwise, I think we've actually implemented all of this stuff. Um, I do, you know, I want to get to the point where we're doing a weekly demo and those demos are going to be not just about tech, but it's also going to, ultimately it's going to be, you know, um, on the business side, we'll be doing weekly reviews of, you know, uh, uh, users and like how many new users are we picking up? How much conversion are we getting and stuff like that? So we'll be doing, you know, not just demos of the Mark II, but demos of the Cellini and, and that kind of thing. Cohort um, analysis and A-B testing and usage statistics from people who up in and feature development and all of the stuff that it will take to make us relevant. Exactly. Um, and as far as the, the firmware for the SJ201, I can't do anything like that uh, about that until I get my uh, my actual Mark II device, which I don't have because Kevin's still in the mountains. So, um, so there you go. That's my update. I have a question. Um, how's the production with the PCBA house? They're expecting to get their uh, the the revised um, PCBs uh, on Thursday. And so uh, if they get them Thursday and we give them the go ahead, they can start production that day. And they said it's about two or three days to get things produced. So, you know, we should say, you know, expect production to be done by Tuesday. Um, was there, cool. yeah. Um, so things are moving along there. Um, as long as we, uh, one outstanding issue that I have to talk with Kevin about is the uh, the testing jig. We need to make sure that they're coming off the line and working. Um, so we've still sure. got that on our to-do list, but um, that's the only thing that could really hold it up right now is if, if the testing process isn't complete in time. Otherwise they have all the parts they need to just start production right away. Any other questions? Um, I don't have a question, more of a, maybe it is a question. But so today um, I was chastised in two different places by one of our community members about the PR I'm working on for the uh, um, GitHub actions. Hmm. Um, yeah, mostly because we have another community member who started the, the PR and I've, I've taken some of his stuff and some of my stuff and I don't know, just the, the way I looked to him was that I was not being FOSS and not being um, a good open source developer. So um, not exactly sure how to, how to handle that. Um, but I thought I would bring it up um, because and surely this is not the only time we've had a, a PR, you know, started by one person and finished by somebody else. And I didn't know if there was a, a process there that, um, I need to, you know, I should be following that I'm not or, or what, you know, what to do about that. Right. Uh, well, you can stop sharing your screen. And also, that sounds like an excellent question for Gez. Uh, any other issues, questions? All right. Well, let's get back to it. And we'll chat again tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Right. Take it easy.